This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola in the new Full Battle Rattle Studios. I remember calling out to God and saying, I believe you because I see God in my surroundings up there in Alaska. Really, it's, it's hard to escape it. She loves God, her country, and dogs. Sounds like Sarah Palin. But it's Kaya Jones, the former Pussycat Doll and recording artist. She's been an amazing supporter of President Trump. And lately, she's been speaking up for Christians worldwide. Today, we talk about so much, including Ann Coulter and Bill Maher. It's a big show with the dynamic Kaya Jones coming up. Plus, we'll have the latest national and Alaska headlines in Sarah Palin News. We'll visit the Crow's Nest with Tanya Crow in California. Also from the Golden State, Kelly Carlson is on target. And a brand new installment of Liberty and Legacy with Tamara Colbert coming up from Texas. Welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio, available at mamagrizzlyradio.com and now available at sarahpalin.com by clicking the More tab. The Palin Update is sponsored by Full Battle Rattle. Full Battle Rattle, helping veterans suffering from combat-related disabilities through the healing power of music. Learn more at facebook.com slash fullbattlerattleabq. Former Pussycat Doll, the talented recording artist Kaya Jones made a splash on this program earlier this year. Today she's back to discuss her rendition of the national anthem and so much more. And right now we welcome Kaya Jones back to the program. Mama Grizzly Radio, the Palin Update. How are you, Miss Jones? I am amazing, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me on Mama Grizzly. I love being on here. Well, you were great last time, and we couldn't wait to have you on again. And, you know, as we talked about a little bit on air and also off air, uh, you know, I love what you said to me. You said, we lovers of country and God need to stick together. And you said, oh, and dogs, too. So how's your dog doing? All right. (laughs) Oh, you know what? She's doing really, really good. The healing has been happening, and I appreciate you asking about her. She's doing good. All right, that's good. And I, you know, because I got to inform Rex about these things. He worries about all his puppy friends <laughs> across the nation, like oh. Jill, Jill Hadassah in Alaska, and of course his his Nevada buddy. So yeah, anybody that doesn't like dogs, something's wrong with them. I would agree with that. That is something that, you know, maybe the president could, you know, sign an executive order putting that out there. I I would go for that. And, you know, even though she's about to have a a baby or is pregnant, you know, Trump's uh, daughter-in-law, they just added another rescue dog to the mix. So we know what kind of family we have in Washington, too, as far as dogs are concerned. A lover, a lover of uh, family is what we have, which is important. It's the most important thing we have. Well, you uh, have been very outspoken, a a, um, big supporter of the president when he ran for office and now as president. So, you know, we have a little sample here. I know the uh, liberals and media try to make this like this 100 day thing is the end all be all uh, for Donald Trump because they're trying to, you know, pin him down on some nonsense. But, you know, Governor Palin asked this in a a, uh, actual uh, genuine way the other day. So I want to ask you, too, what do you think so far with uh, President Trump, uh, someone who supported him so strongly? Are you happy so far? I am so happy. He's doing what he said he was going to do. He's focusing on the initiatives that he put forth, and he's executing them. It's one thing to have a thought and a dream, but it's the execution, and he's doing it. And it's taking time, and he's reformatting because things are happening. You know, people are being moved in and out. Um, But I trust him implicitly, and I think that's the goal. You know, if you voted for him, you know we voted for, you know, a billionaire that put his own money up because of his love of country. and. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of someone who didn't come from this establishment learning so fast, so fast and, um, and holding tight to, to his, uh, his word. Well, I think that's a great assessment and I agree with you. And, you know, I, the article I wrote for Sarah the other week, uh, regarding people you're trying to bash president trump and and i'm not talking about you know the the liberals and the disruptors who are going to say everything he does is wrong but you know even some republicans these establishment types or whatnot you know every little move if you disagree with one thing they want to already say oh well that's enough let's uh let's wipe our hands clean of this and and that's why i pointed out governor (laughs) palin is someone who you know if she has a disagreement will voice it respectfully and you're going to disagree on certain things but for the most part i'd say a bang up uh first few months here and 
and you're noticing it because you're seeing a lot of these celebrities and and a lot of others who've ripped him before. They've been eerily quiet, or all they can th- mm-hmm. do is hurl mm-hmm. the same old you know platitudes <laughs> and insults. So that means they don't really have anything on them in a negative way. So uh, yeah, good start. Yeah, I think it's a great start. And you're right with Governor Palin. You know, uh, Sarah Palin is someone who speaks her mind and her heart. And that, whether you agree or disagree, same with Milo or, you know, Ann Coulter or Bill Maher, you speak your heart, you speak your thought. It's a free country to speak this. And, and there's, uh, there's, there's feeling behind it. And, and I feel that with Sarah when she speaks. And um, I have such respect for Governor Palin. I think, she, um, I, I think she doesn't get enough credit, to be quite frank. I think she needs a bit more credit for for the lady that she is and um, what she's been able to do and, and a free thinker, most importantly. Well, yeah, and and you're right, and she gives credit when, when it's due. And even with people she you – yeah, know, I mean, look, Bill Maher and you mentioned Maher – and Sarah Palin, that relationship has not been good. He said some awful things about her over the years. And oh, she, yes, he and, has. And she's oh, yes, he has. taken them to task. But you know what? On the times when he speaks out against the extreme uh, jihadist Muslim situation and other things, Governor Palin's the first one. You know, she'll say shocking or put an <laughs> exclamation point next to it that <laughs> when, when they do you agree. Know, she but she's not afraid show? to do it. And uh, No, no, she is not. I, I, because I feel like they, she would go at it. Yeah, but then he would. She, th- but then he would like her and lose a lot of material because that's what happens know, right? when he people finally meet her. her. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always said about Bill Maher, the difference of him with some of these others who are just completely empty suits is that I will give him credit on a few things. One, he's a lifelong Met fan like myself and also now an owner of the Mets. Uh, two, uh, he's defended animals, which has been good. And three, some of his non-political stuff, is it's actually good writing. There's actually some humor there. And we've had some other friends of the program, Christine O'Donnell and others who have who have been on that show too. Um, so yes, you know everybody can you know hold their hats and believe I am saying these things. But you see some of these other late nights; it's the same old thing. There's no creativity behind it. It's just bash, bash, bash. They started with Palin; they do it to Trump now, and it's frankly it's pretty unoriginal. But I want to ask you about it's definitely unoriginal. Someone else you just mentioned was Ann Coulter and. Uh, Big, yes. big news recently, this whole deal in Berkeley, you know, the birthplace of free speech. In the meantime, you you can't do anything there. Uh, people worrying about their lives just because they want to voice a different opinion. What's your take there and what's the latest? Well, you know, I don't agree with everything that Anne says, but, you know, I got to meet her. She was on Bill's show. I've known Bill Maher for a very long time. Um, and we don't necessarily agree. I mean, he will, you know, him and I will go back and forth. Um, on a lot. Uh, and I got to meet this lovely woman and, um, she was on his show multiple times cause he has a lot of respect for him. And, um, you know, when he came out and spoke out for her in this, uh, you know, constant going back and forth with Berkeley, yeah. I was really a proud because, you know, in that moment, it's not a liberal thing, right? It's not a democratic thing. It's not a Republican. This is an American, right? It's a part of our constitution. And we don't have a government if we cannot have free speech, this is part of our constitution. That is the, you know, authenticity of um, not having structure if you're taking this away. And if it starts with Anne, when does it end? Because I don't agree with everything Anne says, but I do agree with a lot of what she says. And I actually like to hear a different narrative because it causes you to think and to question and to debate. And this is part of education. It, it, it's important to not always talk with the people that love you. <laughs> right. And, right. Uh, you know, it, this but is that not but that's been that's been the approach of the left. And really, what is I what know. is the Democrat Party today? It's their way or the highway. If you don't agree I, on all those issues, you're out. Yeah. You're out. You know, uh, Bill Maher's done this before before, too, though. Um, if you remember the whole Don Imus situation when Imus was fired uh, years ago for the what was said to be racist comments toward the Rutgers women's basketball team, uh, a lot of people ran and hid from Imus. And Bill Maher did not. He stood up for him when a lot of other people who were guests on Imus's show, who were quote unquote mm-hmm. friends, 
he stood up for him mm-hmm. and stuck his neck out for him, you know, with the risk of losing, you know, some support from people who may not agree. So, you know, uh, you would wish this would happen more that people would. You said, you know, don't agree with Coulter on everything. I don't care if I agree with her on anything. She should be able to speak wherever the heck right. she wants, whenever the heck yeah, she wants, wherever without she wants a threat of violence. Yes. Just, just like when yes. Bernie or Hillary or Obama, or, you know, I don't have time to go there and yell right. at them. I'm busy. But the fact is, Kevin, you're so right. You know, so so that I wish we saw more of this, honestly. But um, well, that's actually what you know. What you're just saying is something that uh, you know a dear friend of mine and Bill's that we've been friends forever. Great photographer, uh, you know, was one of the first photographers for Playboy magazine. Now, do I agree with everything on that? Do I agree with everything on Bill? Does she agree with everything on my side? No, I'm a Christian Republican. He's a liberal, uh, you know, atheist. And yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's called uh, free thought and discussion. What about that is yeah. such a horror? What a novel concept, you know, where right? You're going to silence. You're going to silence her and not allow this to happen and educate. More importantly, this is about education and about open, free thinking in order to stimulate progression. And progression happens when we go back and forth and debate. And we understand more and we think more and we push the narrative more of what we feel is right. And so by doing this with just one person, when does it end? It won't. And so it's imperative that we all hold this into accord, not for Anne, but for the Constitution of the United States. You've uh, spoken a lot lately about your faith, um, about Christians, mm-hmm. and and what's happening yeah. uh, across not just this country, but to some of our earliest forms of Christianity. And 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 you've said mm-hmm. to me, you know, you've you've seen this as pure evil and straight from the Book of Revelation. Tell me, you know, we're talking about the Coptic situation, obviously. If people don't know, tell mm-hmm. us what's happened recently and your take on it, because. You know, this is stuff that, you know, people are going to headline Beyonce and other things, but this is this is big stuff. And, and you know, a lot of people don't even know yeah. what's happening under their nose. No, they don't. And unfortunately, you know, that's that's the ruse, you know, because if you can, it's not about us, right? You know about Jesus. I know about Jesus. The world, you know, hopefully today has heard his name. Um, unfortunately, what this is about is that you can take our earliest form of Christianity, which is, you know, 42 AD is when the Coptics began, um, and genocide, and go into a a very sanctuary place, a holy space, and do something that is beyond measure of word. It is so desecration of the highest regard to life and to uh, history, more importantly, It's our history. Whether you believe or you don't believe, this is history. And what you're doing is by denouncing this and trying to remove it is the generations to come won't even know that he took our sins. So what that is, is not an an infringement on the people that believe in Christ, but rather than removing the cross, this is a fight against the cross. And that means that the trinity of his life for our sins is null and void. And when you remove that, what you're saying then is that you don't belong, you don't matter, and there is no one that cares. Because that's what Christianity is about, is that no matter what you do in the here and the now, God loves you. Bottom line, that's what Christianity is about. You give your life to him, you're saved. You remove that and the rising of the three days and you know him walking out. What you're taking away is this... Uh, very important understanding of our uh, doctrine of um, being saved and understanding that by that cross, by his um, execution, is our, is our savior. So it's beyond just hurting our earliest form of Christians and hurting our history. It is now going against the future generations to come that don't know his name yet because they're not even here. So it's, so important to me um and it aggravates me to no end that uh that we're trying to um you know talk about uh you know everybody needing to be free and everyone needing to have rights and these are our rights as well 
and I'm not okay with it. And I'm certainly not going to get behind just, you know, your hajib. I'm going to get behind my cross. And I think anyone that believes in that cross, wear it, own it, and be proud of it. Because, you know, everyone's pushing the hijab. So why shouldn't you push the fact that your Savior is a living God and Christ died for your sins and remind them that the body is the temple and is the church and you can take down a physical place, but um, he's within us. So he's, it's already won. Well, yeah. Oh, well, that's a great way to put uh, sum that up. It is already one, and and you know, I, I love when we say that to each other and our friends, especially when we're stressed out and uh, feel like some of the frustration of the things we see today. Um, that that is the best news of all. And you know, with Easter just a couple weeks ago, uh, Governor Palin a lot of posts on her social media and her website uh, regarding that. You know, regarding that. You know, this is like you said, Christ is risen, and. Uh, it's right. it's it's amazing and and I know it's for some people who don't know or or for people even for us I mean the amazing feeling to know that love is like beyond any love that we could imagine here on earth and how we feel toward family and friends and uh it's right. it, it's so amazing to feel that way but but it's also uh, encouraging right now that we do have someone in the White House who is defending Christians and defending us and it, isn't it funny that he was mocked uh, early on in the primaries, uh, President Trump, and said, well, this guy, you know, I don't know. You know, People had the mm-hmm. gall to question a man's Christianity or a man's heart. And here he is so far uh, so great with what he's done as far as Christians, not only in the U.S., but across the world. Well, yeah, because that's, you know, that's what America was built on, is that there is an above oneself. And um, we're not God, we're human. And, um, you know, it's, it's important to keep this narrative going because it's been shunned away from Americans that want it. America is paying what they want and people are not listening. Entertainment's not listening. Artists are not listening. Government's not, in, you know, listen. Listen to what the people want. They're telling you what they want. They want unit, core, God, and country. That's what they want. And... We need to listen to the people, and it's imperative. It's imperative to our doctrines, our understanding of our Constitution, to try and erase, you know, what we are and not discuss slavery and not discuss Indians and not discuss, um, you know, settlers is a horrible thing to do to our nation and to not understand where we come from. And it's okay that we came from a lot of different paths that we're not great it's okay because in the here and the now this is what america is now what do we do with it now that's important and and not worrying about what has been before in the now right now and turning your back on what's going on that's a sin that's wrong and it doesn't matter whether you agree or you agree to disagree stand up for your country unite as a nation because the world doesn't like what we stand for, which is freedom. And that's the world that we live in. So we're either going to stand up for our freedoms and stand beside each other with differences or attack each other in the middle of a civil war while the rest of the world is going to laugh because they're coming against us. And so it's imperative that we don't do that, that we don't listen to the noise and we listen to each other and we debate and we find a commonality and we keep it moving. And know that there are really bad guys that want to hurt our country and what we stand for. Should we worry about that or should we worry about within? This is now the question. Are we worried about away or within? It almost feels like it's both. And, you know, conquer and divide, but infiltration comes before you conquer and divide it. That's right. So that infiltration's right. already begun. It's already begun. And that's where the, 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 uh, the feeling of Americans right now is intense because we can feel it. You can feel the energy of what is happening to our nation. Why is everyone so upset? Why are we not listening and screaming? You know, um, that's scary because the, the, real, the real terror is not here. And... Um, we are creating a within terror because of infiltration that's begun from before. And, you know, when people want to talk about 
the Russians and this and that. The Cold War never ended. Well, part of that don't people understand. Right. I right. Mean, or when they talk about I mean? they they, this- the, the new term they like to throw around is World War Three. I said, didn't that start on September yeah. 11, 2001? I mean, you it know, did. it's just so funny, but they want to, you know, use it for their narrative. I want to talk quickly, uh, Kaya, before we let you run, as far as uh, your recording uh, career and what's going on lately. I know uh, a national anthem out oh. there. Yes, we have um, my national anthem that was done in one take completely live. A hundred percent of the proceeds are going to the 14th hour and um, look them up. They're an incredible organization. And um, Tonto or Chris Pronto, as a lot of people know him, he has a great book that just come out. And, um, you know, this is one of our real soldiers, a real superhero. You know, we want to think superheroes are this fictitious thing, but I, I regard our men and women as superheroes because they take the bullets for us that we're not willing to take and they stand and fight in serious conditions and danger for freedom. And so it's not free and a hundred percent of all sales, I'm not taking a penny or a dime is going to the 14th hour. So I am really excited about that and really grateful to our men and women. And hopefully we can do more for them than just, 99 cents on a song on my, you know, if you go to my website, you can get it. If you go to iTunes, you can get it. But we, we should do more for our men and women. They should not be on the street. Um, it, it's, it's disgusting to see them on the street and not having a home and not being placed correctly because they were built to protect and serve. And then they come home and we've tossed them aside. So it's important that we remember that and we do everything to stop that. So um, that's what we're doing with my, uh, my single, with the National Anthem, and I'm recording a new album and talking to Joy Via, who's my near and dear buddy, and Andre Soriano, and figuring out ways that we can do more together as friends and as lovers of our incredible nation. Well, they are all so great. You know, Andre sends me a great Easter message the other week. I mean, what a great guy. Enjoys the best. We're going to have her on the show soon, too. So, uh, Kai Jones, you rock. We love it. Thanks for being with us again. We hope you rock, Kevin. Thank talk, you for having me. Talk to you again soon, I hope. Uh, we could talk to you forever. I mean, there's so much to talk about, and, it, and it's great. I could talk to you great. forever, Kevin. I mean, we love God, country, dogs. Kalen, <laughs> Don't uh, forget. Trump. <laughs> we could keep and going. Rex really appreciates that you always get the dogs in there, you know? Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, because they can see past just what, you know, what is a man past the uniform or the clothes? You know, it's the heart. It's your spirit. It's your soul. And, and that's what animals do. They see, they see your soul. So anyone that doesn't like animals, they kind of go, hmm, <laughs> you know? Red flag. <laughs> Red flag, totally. For more, please check out KayaJones.com. Now it's time for Sarah Palin news, headlines, and more about Governor Palin. After the First Amendment is stomped on again at Berkeley, Governor Palin says don't ever let anyone tell you to sit down and shut up. History in France. Snowflakes melt over Palin's White House visit. Democrat disarray continues. More than meets the eye on the Obama prisoner release. The joke that is the U.N., a beautiful story out of Minnesota. Palin on education, local control is the solution, she says, to the problem called Common Core. As with any other problem, though, the way to fix it is to first be able to identify it. Mama Grizzly versus worldly millennial chick. Palin stands with Bill Shine, the real reason ESPN cleaned house, And a big thanks to Governor Palin for linking this radio network on her website, sarahpalin.com. Just click on the More tab at sarahpalin.com and then click Mama Grizzly Radio. To read all about these stories, visit the Mama Grizzly Radio Facebook page. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety and to read her devotionals, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page, follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA, and don't miss the new (laughs) sarahpalin.com. Now let's head to the crow's nest. Here's Tanya Crow. Thanks, Kevin. So I want to explore authenticity this week. Authentic, genuine, real actuality and lack of falsehood or misrepresentation. It also carries the connotation of authoritative confirmation that things or people are what they are claimed 
or appear to be real, genuine, not copied or false. Authenticity is what won the election this year. Authenticity is what endears us to people. Authenticity is one of the most precious gifts that every single human being has been given. We are all one of a kind. There will never be another version of you or me. That's the one thing about politics that's always boiled my blood, especially when it comes to the left. The lack of authenticity that I bear witness to and have been bombarded with their talking points, their group think, their inability to actually have original thoughts, original discourse. There is a brainwashing that is occurring on a consistent basis that disables the left's ability to exercise their authenticity. All you see is the motivation for the win, the election, the votes, the power. And now we're starting to see the tyranny, all of which is a breeding ground for minimizing and even extinguishing the authenticity of a human being, of a person. And all of us are an original. All people are an original. And to have so little curiosity, to have so little desire to connect with the originality of others is devastating, is mind-blowing. But just like a cancer cell that separates itself from the rest of the body and the cells that exist in the body that are all unique, what I see is happening right now is that that cancerous destructive consciousness is being rectified, is being removed. And I wish that the authenticity of every human being be unleashed and revered and honored and respected. Till next week. This is Tanya Crow with Mama Grizzly Radio. Tanya Crow on Mama Grizzly Radio. More from the Crow's Nest next week. Now on Target with Kelly Carlson. Thanks, Kevin. So last week I was talking about the active shooter and the types of training that people usually seek out, which is getting their concealed carry, hopefully some close quarters combat, but um, unfortunately people don't seek out that kind of training. The most important training, I think, is medical training because if you're sitting there and there are casualties around you, there's trauma, most people want to attend to somebody but they don't know what to do and they don't know how to communicate um, maybe to first responders. So I talked about you know a class that I took and um, my friend Joseph White is here. And he teaches austere medical management, and I really want him, and I'm really happy he's here because he can articulate this much better than I can and to discuss the type of things that he teaches. Joseph, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Kelly. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, One of the things you talk about, and I'm just going to jump right into, is mental triage. And I love this term that you came up with because... I was really talking about not actually practicing medicine on people. That's not what this is about. It's about the mental triage. Can you talk about it? Yeah. Mental triage isn't something I necessarily invented. It's more of a a catch-all term that we um, use in combat medicine and emergent care. Uh, It refers to the ability for the first responder or the person on scene to mentally go over what they see versus what they think they see, what they feel, and what they can diagnose by either feeling or seeing to convey to a higher level of medical uh, expertise. So in in effect, you're the person on scene and you're able to distinguish and differentiate between the fact someone is actually bleeding from their head or their head just is laying in a puddle of blood, for example. Uh, These are extremely important 
details when conveying information to a higher level of uh, medical practice or what we would refer to as scope of practice when you're handing over a patient uh, from say an EMT to a nurse or a nurse to a doctor etc. The mental triage is the way that we can go through the list of eliminating of what we are certain is not going on and then deal with what the could be going on is at hand. Let me ask you this. Why is it important for a civilian to be able to mentally triage? Like, let's say they're in the Fort Lauderdale airport and that active shooter, you know, did his thing. You have all these trauma uh, situations laying around. Why is it important for this? Well, specifically in that scenario, Kelly, the the civilian who may or may not have any formal medical training but wants to do something to help, the mental triage skills that we offer and we incorporate from other uh, branches of medicine helps the person be a better on-site, uh, you know, some people say eyewitness, because a lot of times it, it's nothing more than being able to phone in to 911, but with the austere medical management, we teach that you are, you know, the help, you are 911, or that 911 is just too far away. So the next level of the mental triage that would be uh, incorporated in this skill set is making the judgment call of what can you do to actually uh, help, help the injured party and keep them from progressing through the injury chain, which is basically stop them from getting worse. Uh, civilians, it becomes a huge um, a huge thing for them to be able to do because they're usually 99% of the time are going to be the ones there when it actually happens uh, as opposed to you know a doctor or another uh, trained medical professional. So this brings up something important is scope of practice. Is there such thing as a scope of practice for somebody who has no medical training? Well scope of practice is is a tricky uh, subject and, and just a definition, I'll give you a very basic and broad understanding. Every, every state has a different level of what they consider a normal average person could do. Similar to every state has different, you know, concealed carry laws and castle doctrine, etc. Scope of practice for medical management or any intervention that is medical in nature will be different depending on what state you're in. The idea that you're protected simply because you're trying to help or the so-called Good Samaritan Act is, is false. It's just, it just doesn't work that way. If you attempt to do something medically because you wanted to help but you are not formally trained or licensed to do and you cause injury greater to the patient, you will be held both legally and civilly liable for that. So that's where the mental triage becomes an even more uh, important role at a, as a first responder or someone on scene for, say, an active shooter. The mental triage allows you to visually understand what you can say objectively versus subjectively or subjectively versus objectively is going on on the situation and whether you are able to, with your skills, put hands on and help, or if you're simply going to be a good relayer of communication to the powers that be that are able to get there and help it, you know, when they're dispatched from whatever uh, situation may be. And you know what I love, and, and, you know, mental triage, there's all this training for people that are listening that is under that to, to be able to provide a mental triage. And one of the things um, in your training that I love is really the, the focus on the organs and then the body also as like an ecosystem and how it functions. You have to really get to know the human body, how it operates, what it needs at its bare minimum to keep going, not just as the body, but then how each organ responds to certain traumas so then when you do understand the body, and I think this requires a multiple times, like for me, I want to take your class several times. I can't just take it once and know the body. Um, but you have to really understand the body in order 
to be able to look at somebody and know what's going on or have a good idea to be able to relay that information. Um, for example, when you um, talked about like if, if there was a trauma to the liver and just by the nature of the material, or I'm sorry, the tissue of the liver, I think most people think that um, people are going to die if they have trauma to the liver. But one of the things you talked about before was is there blood coming out of the mouth or isn't there? And I know this information totally um, inspired me to learn more because it's not necessarily the case, right? It, it's not a death sentence for everybody. That, yeah, that's absolutely correct. One of the, one of the problems we have, uh, I only teach military personnel and law enforcement at the federal level. I, I do consults with civilians from time to time and one of the biggest hurdles that we have as medical professionals as doctors to conveying this knowledge is getting past this Hollywood image of what's going to happen if you were stabbed or what's going to happen if you're shot or what's going to happen if you know you get in a car wreck uh, the human body is extremely versatile and we wouldn't be here in this day and age if we were as fragile as some of these uh, Hollywood interpretations of death played out to be that way. Easy, easy. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Everybody um, knows I'm an actor. I'm teasing. Well, and you do a great job at conveying <laughs> all but, the myths. Right. I'm good at all the myths, right? right. No. Okay, but I have a little humor. Okay. The uh, bringing it back to point though is that a lot of people think that, for example, if they're shot one time that the person's going to fall over and they're just not going to get back up. And that's simply untrue, especially with a handgun caliber. Um, for example, the 45 ACP shot center mast in the chest conveys the same amount of pressure as dropping a nine pound weight plate onto your foot from about eight inches. That's not a lot. Uh, it's definitely not enough to knock over a full-size human man. Now, what we see is a psychological response where someone gets shot and they have seen multiple images of a bad guy go flying across the room and they will fall down. But that wasn't what the body reacted. That was a psychological reaction. So how this plays into effect with to getting it back to the mental triage is understanding actual anatomy and physiology and mm -hmm. understanding what's really happening with the physiological dynamics of the injury. So for example, in, in your scenario of uh, trauma to the liver, a lacerated liver, the liver is extremely uh, venous, very, it's, it's full of blood for in layman's terms. It, it will bleed, but the tissue in itself is some of the most versatile tissue in the human body. If the, the hepatic artery or the hepatic vein is missed, you do not have uh, blood coming out of the mouth for, and, and I'm trying to keep this in layman's terms as best as mm -hmm. possible, but uh, hemoemesis or, or throwing up blood, there's a good chance that the liver is going to sustain and you can tr move on to treat something that may be even more severe, like a, a greater vessel, uh, the femoral artery or the carotid mm -hmm. artery has been uh, cut or hit or shot, you know, if it's a gunshot wound. The, and that's what the mental triage is all about. Is, Can I cut you off here? Yes. I, <laughs> because is this show. is, no, 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 no. But <laughs> this is what I learned from you that was like, is such an epiphany because if, if, if now I know that if I, if I don't necessarily see blood and I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to treat anybody, but I have the knowledge to maybe there's a worse trauma location on the body. Certainly. And I should identify that. Certainly. I wouldn't have known that. I would have assumed the liver is going to be the worst situation. And I may be under so much um, stress that I won't be, folk, you know, to think, to look. And, and that's completely but, normal is what we found in bringing it back to that, uh, you know, correlation when we do some of these uh contract classes out to civilian, even doctors. I'm talking about civilian doctors is who we teach. Um, there's a lot of times there's a lot of misconception because over the last, you know, 15 years or so with the global war on terror, we, we have a better understanding of how especially uh, violent trauma affects the body. 
and we've come a long way and it's it's unfortunate but war does drive that medicine you know for for obvious re reasons so just because you see blood in the ear or see blood out of the nose or something that you may think is right away you know detrimental the person's not going to make it you're almost in fact just enabling the process of them to die by not attempting to help in in a way that it sounds horrible but we've seen this happen as well doing nothing obviously isn't going to help but also doing the wrong thing isn't going to help either so the to round out what you're saying it's it's really a stressor to get education understanding mm -hmm. uh and at the very basic level even if you don't have the time or the energy or the money to go get advanced medical training simple anatomy and physiology yes. just understanding the human body and what it takes for homeostasis or proper body function to work right you know we have to breathe oxygen blood belongs in the body these are the basic parts that right. you know you need to understand and with the the mental triage you can go through and basically the way we teach it is go from you know head to toe and eliminate or cross off all the major uh, systems of the body to figure out that's okay let's move to the next and right. then we can either if the person is capable they can render the appropriate aid if they aren't capable then they can convey accurate information to the professional who's in yeah. route and that's my goal I want to I want to be in control as much as I can and that's usually having knowledge and training whether you use it or not but I want to know for the most part what I'm looking at so I can convey that information and not do more harm to somebody because you know I'm going to run to someone's aid. Right, right. right. So, and it, I think for most people, like you said, it, it's a natural instinct. Yeah. There's what I've seen in my professional career is two. It's it's fight or flight. And that mm -hmm. can be conveyed into the medical scenario as help or run. Um, you know, you're either going to render aid or try to call someone and comfort someone you know, while, the, while help's on the way, or you're just going to leave or observe. Unfortunately, in this day and age, a lot of people whip out their phone and start videotaping when they could have been rendering aid. But mm -hmm. uh, without the education, you know, you can simply do more more damage than you mm -hmm. would have helped, honestly. So can I um, ask you real quick, because we have to wrap up, where can people listening find you? The easiest way uh, for me to be located is on Facebook, actually. It's austere medical management uh, and it's a hyphenated long name but that we're the only ones under austere medical management and uh, we're part of a uh, collective group of training uh, individuals that help uh, folks from normal level all the way up to federal and military uh, just have a higher preparedness for real life encounters um, a variety. Variety of our life really encounters. That's, but that's I, true. I value your uh, knowledge so much, and I'm excited. This weekend we have a course, and I'm going to be there as one of the students. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this it's interview. It's my pleasure. And hopefully I was able to shed some light on this really important topic that you've been talking about. Yeah, and we'll do it again, too. Awesome. It cool. was great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, this is Kelly Carlson with Mama Grizzly Radio. Tune in for more On Target next week. Now, the Palin Update with Kevin Shola presents Liberty and Legacy. Here's Tamara Colbert. Just when you think you can drain the swamp in Washington, D.C., what if there's a swamp right in your own state capitol? The state of Texas, our capital, seems to be no different than Washington, D.C. We made it through our committee, the Convention of States Resolution, and they attached a poison pill to the bottom of that legislation. What we ended up getting was out of committee. That was our bonus. We were supposed to be happy with that. But you know what? We're not happy with something that is almost a joke to legislators. It's going to kill our legislation because they've attached it to two other pieces of legislation that have had amendments that essentially guarantee neither of those two bills will get passed. 
So essentially, they can be able to say, oh, I voted for your legislation, so you can't go after me during my re-election. It doesn't work like that. I'm here to say the American people, the Texas people, are a lot smarter. You know, I think the most irritating thing about all of this is the fact that my co-director in Texas for the Convention of States Project, we have over 125,000 volunteers and probably quadruple that in people that support us, but just are not as active as the other folks. And you know, these legislators on Friday, the chairman of that committee pulled our legislation saying there was a point of order and they needed to fix it which means that this Wednesday, May 3rd, our legislation is not now on the House floor for a vote. So what do we do? We're supposed to trust these guys that they are doing the right thing. I want to trust them. I really do. But now it just seems fishy. I've got over 500 volunteers who are coming to the Capitol that day. They know that. So here's the thing. If a legislator is doing the right thing, Having 500 eyeballs or witnesses with a thousand eyeballs watching them doing the right thing, they should be excited. But somehow I feel that these guys don't want a thousand people there. Why is that? Probably because they have no intent on amending SJR2, the Texas Convention of States Resolution, and doing the wrong thing. Because otherwise, why wouldn't a legislator want to be a hero, especially a hero to the grassroots in this time where we're looking for ways to drain any swamp at any level of government? So I caution everybody in their state capitals, it's time to wake up. We've got to be paying attention at home as well as the federal government. I love being part of the Convention of States project because every day is a reminder that I live in a state where I have a voice that can truly make a difference. And we're doing that here in Texas. In fact, the Convention of States project is doing that all over the country. This week, our goal is to get passed. At this point, I don't know if that's going to happen. I just think we've been able to shed light on a process that is essentially not working for the people in the great state of Texas. But the people are going to help fix it. And for those of you who have no intention on doing the right thing and getting the Convention of States legislation to the floor by Wednesday, May 3rd, there's going to be a cost. I promise you, there's going to be a cost because the grassroots know and we're watching. And I love that because Americans are paying attention now more than ever. So folks, pay attention. Find out what your states are doing, but also keep a watchful eye on Washington, D.C. I'm going to have an update for you next week. In the meantime, have a blessed week. You can tweet me at Tamara Colbert, hashtag Mama Grizz Radio. Stay tuned. And if you're in Texas and you hear this, call your legislator and tell them to vote for SJR2, the Convention of States Resolution. I'm Tamara Colbert for Mama Grizzly Radio. Tamara Colbert in Texas. Tune in for more Liberty and Legacy next week. And to learn about Convention of States, head to conventionofstates.com. The Palin Update, including Liberty and Legacy, On Target, and The Crow's Nest is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin, also available at sarahpalin.com by clicking the More tab. Like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook and follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Tamara Colbert, at Tanya Yoga 13, and at FBR ABQ. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to Breitbart.com slash columnists slash Kevin hyphen Shola. I'm also contributing to SarahPalin.com. Please check out my latest piece this week. Visit SarahPalin.com slash author slash Kevin hyphen Shola. Honored to be working on the governor's new site. I want to thank Tamara Colbert, Tanya Crow, Kelly Carlson, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Kaya Jones. And thank you for listening today. A special thanks to our sponsor, Full Battle Rattle. Visit Facebook.com slash Full Battle Rattle ABQ. The Palin Update is produced by Lena Anderson, the Andy L. Kramer, 
and Laurie Ann Lewis. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update right here on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.